Hey guys, Jake back from Rotten Reels Reviews and Rotten Rambling On. And this would be audio review number six, actually. Wow, we're coming along such a way. So, um, as you know, I'm no stranger to power tools and, uh, you know, graphic mutilations, right? The fact that a myriad of such home improvement apparati has been used against creatures, sex-starved teens, and more than a plethora of deadites throughout the films I've enjoyed with friends and family, as well as some of the more cantankerous piles of congealed mon monkey vomit that I've endured for this blog. So, when you pick a title that's so far removed from your typical kind of deserve everything you get, right? Well, this turd waffle flew off the screen and ulcerated my soul for the day, and uh, so feel free to duck because there's going to be some petty rage heading. This is, and I can't believe I'm reading this out loud, Vampire Chicks with Chainsaws. Now, I'd like to think for the most part that I usually remain objective for all the films I watch, and there are times when the film is so psychologically or physically or spiritually impossible to get through. And I've sat through more than my fair share of nickel and dime films like Camp Blood, Zombies vs. Vampires, and hell, we'll even throw Bloodlust in. These movies don't have a whole lot going for her. Maybe some decent camera work, perhaps an actor managed to really emote for the movie, or say, my personal favorite, when these shoestring budgeters don't rely entirely on nudity. That being said, our vampire movie is primarily shot under the cover of mid-afternoon, when the creatures of the night are awake, I guess. Look, this is not the first non-budget flick I've endured. I mean, if you remember Pl Platoon of the Dead, that the store-bought stormtrooper blasters that had the stickers the Imperial Seas still on, oatmeal, zombie effects, and ketchup for blood. And do you have any idea why that kind of therapy is required to get over that? Me either. I more or less forget about mm, everything until this cheeseball flick. Also, everything that has ever been written by the mythos of vampires is completely wrong, according to our young brainchild writer, editor, director, Carlos Don Diego, whose very name sounds like he should be freeing Mexico from the Spaniards with a, on a black horse with a bullwhip and a saber. Am, am I wrong? I don't think so. So grab your hip, waiters, because here we go. Our moving pictures opens with what it what looks to be a Sony purchased music metal score, which the uh, Native American cat in a black trench is spouting. It is toting this spa's shotgun that just screams, "I just got my first airsoft gun!" And he's being chased throughout these woods, uh, twin skinheads, and no doubt they are going to shoot him for eyeing their lemon drink. Punishable is is death, of course, and, yeah, with good reason. In fact, he seems to be leading this half-assed team of numb knuckles through uh, the woods, and spoiler, get used to seeing these woods. The ancient spirits tell him, well, nothing according to the soundtrack, and none of these guys look like they've ever had a crash course with a local SWAT team, which tends to make your film look a little more cheesy if your characters don't even look like they know how to handle a gun or a rifle. I mean, decent enough handheld drags of one of the good old boys offers that Sega Genesis 1993 Jurassic Park Raptor sound effects, so you know he's in trouble. These three are dispatched by squirting the equivalency of Kool-Aid Ecto-Cooler, uh, possibly a lesser shampoo, under the terrifying time of about five in the afternoon. Yeah. So our hillbilly extraordinaire... Uh, Quinn Ash, uh, Adam Abram from The Collectors, The Eleventh Hour Saga, Curse of the Shadow, and One Shot, has this very piss-poor ADA recording for a narrative, and proceeds to saw up trees, which kind of describes his entire sad existence. Um, the metaphors and the idioms are so blasé, you kind of wish you'd gone deaf at that point. And FYI, this is our third bald guy. I'm not saying there was like a quota or long hair was for sissies. I'm not sure what the vision there was. His trailer that he's apparently 
residing at. Looks like it got abandoned like ten years prior. I was actually convinced there was like the corpse of dead raccoons in it, and so they couldn't actually afford to lease one for the film. After handing off uh, divorce papers for his ex-wife and her goofball redneck, the uh, hillbilly butt boy, our protagonist accidentally runs over a girl. I'm, I mean, I get distracted too, but she was about by nine. You, you would spot her no matter how high up your truck is. You'd have to be at monster truck volume. The girl jumps up and ejects him with some sort of drug, warns him off about Carell will kill him, to get what she has given him, and then just like bolts through the underbrush, only to be, you know, ambushed by five scrawny-looking guys with sh- with guns. So what is Quinn to do other than you know pants them and give them rope burns until they cry? Yeah. So our movie drags on for about seventeen minutes, and then out of nowhere, the vampire chicks with chainsaws just up oh, up and attack. No, seriously. Uh, yeah, screw having the strength, ability to punch through walls. Best to dice them up with a McCullough. Yeah, a brand they cannot afford again. As most of these chainsaws look like hedge tremors. The, a vixen with bad highlights and for some reason vinyl and pleather attacks our hero with several punches and kicks, but doesn't gut him with, uh, I don't know, maybe a chainsaw? Trailing down our doofus uh, takes at least another 15 minutes, and then the damn narrative is back again, captured, uh, capturing him by four scantily clad vampires led by Carell. This uh, Jenna Lisby of Take a Chance, Vampire Chicks with Chainsaw, CTU, Bravo, and 1900 Joe. Yeah, I'm not making these titles up. Around uh, about the five minute mark and becomes a punching bag, Quinn figures they don't want him for a booty call. And then we have these warring factions of the Chainsaw Chippies and the Outlanders. Yeah, I know, insert every children of the corn joke right there. Have been preying on each other for centuries and blah, 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 Underworld did it better. And apparently whatever the girl injected Quinn with could dispatch vampires forever. Yeah, I was bored out of my skull for 93 minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I mean, there's a... Sorry, old ye old sexist pig folk, but uh, no nudity. The gore scenes are so ratcheted down, it's kind of the mindset that they probably didn't have the skill set to actually make an effective uh, gore gag. The jump cuts kind of help showing how fake blood is being made or being squirted out but they don't even know how to make proper fake blood and i'm just sitting there going carousel black and red food dye give it a whirl so if you like aliens vampire girls bald-headed doofs then have at this stink nugget you'll probably find it on youtube for a tutor and a titter <laughs> i gotta be honest though you're really not missing out so again if there's anything else you want me to review Maybe uh, give a glance or, hey, maybe we can get Sean from Rotten Rambling On to jump in on some of these. Give me a shout, give me a heads up, throw something in the comments, or you can catch us on Facebook for Rotten Reels Reviews or Rotten Rambling On. Either one, we're available. You have a good one.